double consciousness. In non-Western the other day, the class was talking about an Arabic play they had been reading called Actress Jay's Burial Night. Basically, the premise of the play is there's this actress who the audience understands is in some kind of purgatory waiting room to the afterlife. We don't really know what's going on. Um, but in any event, it's not realistic realism in any sense of the word. Um, she's the only actress on stage, and she doesn't know her name. She can't figure out what her identity is. All she knows is all of the famous roles that she's ever played throughout her lifetime. And there are roles like Helen of Troy, Desdemona, Ophelia, Juliet, Marie Antoinette, as well as um, Zenobia and other, other roles from her culture, basically, that are powerful yet tragic women. Throughout the play, Actress Jay picks up different masks of roles that she's played. For instance, like Desdemona, she says, Desdemona, sweet little Desdemona, she comes to me at night all alone, looks to be sure I'm alone. Full of fear, still she bears around her the horror of her tragedy. She sits and speaks in a wounded voice, and then she puts on the mask, and then she speaks as Desdemona to herself. You know, Actress Jay, you know the whole truth. I never betrayed Othello. So why did he kill me? I was a victim. They betrayed my innocence. Even Othello conspired with them. He was just their tool. Am I the weakest because I'm the most innocent? And then she'll talk about her situation with Desdemona and whatever. And there's a whole lot of stuff about feminism going on and whatnot. But, so the concept of double consciousness came up. And I had never really heard about it before. So Doug decided to explain it to us. W.E.B. Du Bois talks about double consciousness when thinking about the civil rights movement and the way that African Americans have an authentic self that they feel that they can only express in private areas like the home or in church, uh, whereas they play different roles in the, the white patriarchal society in order to survive. This is exactly like what Irving Goffman was basically talking about, the performance of everyday life. It's exactly the same concept. So what W.E.B. Du Bois was philosophizing, I suppose, is that the performed self eventually takes over and then the real authentic self is eventually lost entirely in some kind of great void of society. And W.E.B. Du Bois borrowed this concept from Diderot, who talked about the paradox of acting, which is, you know, during the neoclassic era, the concept of an actor assuming a role, but always being conscious that he is that actor. Because if the actor, you know, assumed they became the character, and that's all method acting, all that weird stuff, so then we would just send them all off to the loony bin, wouldn't we? In these videos, I am trying to perform as my authentic self because the whole purpose of this video, of these videos, of this entire project is to record and share my authentic ideas and my authentic thought process with the rest of the world. So as long as I am my authentic self, I have entertainment, clarity, understanding, everything as possible. But throughout the entire process, I know I'm performing for a camera, and I know that I'm trying hard to be authentically me as possible without being somebody else. But it's a lot harder than you think it would be. A lot of times I'm tempted to do silly things just for fun, or, you know, I try and create these great notions and ideas and I try and share them with you, YouTube user, audience, viewer that I've never met before. And it's really difficult. It's really hard to just stay true to yourself because you're so tempted by the devil lens. The Canon video lens is a devil. It makes you want to be somebody different. It makes you want to be funny because inside humans care about what other people think of them. Or maybe that's just something that our society tells us we want. Maybe if I mastered double consciousness, these video projects would be a lot easier. <laughs>